Yep. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll call this meeting of the Madeira Beach Planning Commission uh, to order. It is six o'clock on the money. Please call the roll. Chairman Wyckoff. Present. Commissioner Gavahi. Present. Commissioner Dillon. Here. Commissioner Noble. Commissioner Connolly. Here. Commissioner Marr. Commissioner LaRue. Here. All right, looks like we've got a quorum. Next item on the agenda is public comment. Uh, public participation, of course, is encouraged at all of our meetings. If you're addressing the Planning Commission, please step up to the podium, state your name and your address for the record. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Please don't include any item on the agenda as uh, your comment. We will have time for that when we hit that agenda item. However, it should be noted that an agenda item was pulled. So if you have a comment on that, um, please feel free to do it now during public comments. But that agenda item has been pulled, and that was the redevelopment for uh, 131174 Street. Public uh, comments are welcome, and I'm welcoming to step forward at this point. Went through all that for nothing. Okay. <laughs> all right. She does. She will throw things at me if I don't do that. So thank you. Uh, our next item is the approval of the minutes. So I would like a motion, if you so please, to approve the minutes from last month's meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes as stated from last month. I second it. All right. We've got a motion and a second. Anybody offering up any corrections? We good to go? Please call the roll. Commissioner Dillon? Yes. Commissioner Connolly? Yes. Commissioner LaRue? Commissioner Gavaghi? Yes. Chairman Wyckoff? Yes. All right, the minutes are approved. Thank you very much. Uh, so having that application for um, 131174 Street poll, that means we have no new business. I see no old business. This should be a pretty short meeting if Jenny has anything to do with it. Uh, so our administrative or staff presentation is item 7A, Johns Pass Village Zoning. All right, I'll take it away. Thank you. Um, so on March 13, um, so a few weeks ago, the BOC approved adopting ordinance 2023-01 and 2023-02, which basically approved the special area plan for John's Pass Village Activity Center, and then changed our map, our future land use map, to incorporate that activity center. So now we have an activity center, the Johns Pass Village Activity Center. We have that at the county level. We have that locally. Now the next step in this is the zoning. So that's what we're going to start talking about today. Um, I know we've had a little bit of discussion on that before, a little bit of, um, of a presentation. So um, I have in your packet, I'll pull it up here too. It's kind of a starting point of, uh, we wanted to bring up, because we figured these are going to be the hot topics, the setbacks and the height. So we've included on page 20, starting at page 20 of the packet, um, we have the character districts, uh, the existing zoning category, existing height, and that's where we measure it from, design flood elevation, easiest way to imagine that is the second floor of a building. And then on the ground highest building, these are measured from grade. So that can be a little tricky to imagine. Um, here, let me make this a little bigger. I didn't realize it was so small up there. And then the proposed height, just kind of what we internally have talked about. Uh, we really just wanted to have like a kickoff um, area so we can start discussing this. Uh, so it's not just free for all. We can see your input. Um, we'll also have three public meetings. We'll have one on April the 13th, which is the Saturday from 10 to noon. We'll have one on April the 18th, which is a Thursday, 10 to noon. And then a third public workshop on the 20th, 1 to 3. So the 13th and the 18th, those are both 10 to noon. And then the 20th, which is a Saturday, 1 to 3. So that'll be after the Hurricane Expo on that same day on the 20th. 
uh, and we are mailing out postcards to every single resident. So what we have in your packet, we have the height, and then we also have in here the setbacks, did very some, something very similar to the height. Uh, we have character district, zoning category, existing setbacks on the ground, and where you see um, like no, no numbers, that's where we're still collecting data. And then proposed setbacks. And anywhere in the red on both of these sheets, that's where we see any changes. Jenny, can I ask you a quick question? Back up mm -hmm. to the first table you showed. Do we have, never mind, I already answered my question. Oh. Withdrawn. OK. <laughs> I mean, sorry about that. We also have a site plan of an existing structure down there uh, that shows the height and the setbacks. Um, that we wanted to show an example of why we we proposed the 60 feet because there are a few six and seven story buildings mixed in down there and and multiple of the character districts, including because the parking garage down there is is uh, six. Uh, six floors of parking. Um, many of the condo buildings are, are six stories. And then uh, like a Barefoot Beach Club and I think Madeira Bay each have I think seven, seven stories. But one has uh, just one ground floor of parking. And then one of the Madeira Bay buildings has uh, two floors of parking, mm -hmm. which is Which is we shown. have right here. Yeah. So this, oh, this is Madeira Bay, that's seven stories. Um, and then... The six stories, I think that was Barefoot Beach. Yeah. So I don't know if we want to go to the example first or if we just want to dive in to, I guess we can go to the example, kind of show you where that design flood elevation, where we calculate the height in our code. And in the past, it depends on when it was built. Um, some of them, I think Barefoot Beach Club, it their PD references the base flood elevation, not design flood elevation of where they calculated the height. Um, before that, there was sometimes they calculated from the ground. So it wasn't consistent. Now it's consistent in how we measure the height. It's always design flood elevation, which is the base flood elevation plus a freeboard, which okay. we have four feet. Is that two feet freeboard? We have four feet. Four, four. We used yeah, to be okay. two. Now okay. we're four. It was a, back in 2021, right. I believe. So here's barefoot. So this is to give you an example of where we measure the height. So right here is four feet above base flood elevation, uh, which now is the design flood elevation. This is where the first you know, above, above parking and above what's uh, flood proofed. So you see it, it's, it's second story. So that's really where we start measuring the height. So as you can see from DFE, then we measure to the first occupied um, height to the top of the last occupied floor. That's really the height. And there is a section in our code me scroll back where there's certain exceptions to the height so chimney cooling towers elevators fire towers stairways architectural features those can exceed that height um, but it can't not be, habitable space yeah so it can't be over 20 feet of what the height is so also keep that in mind when we're talking about height so if we go back to Barefoot, we can see, okay, well, this is where we would measure the height. Here's the design flood elevation. So we're starting here. And we go up. Okay, you see this is the this is air-conditioned area. So, okay, that's where we are measuring the height from there to there. And then all of this architectural features, the tops of buildings, um, we wouldn't count that in the height. 
So, Jenny, one question. Um, sometimes you have flat roof, sometimes you have hip roof. So how do you, do you go to the center, to the middle of hip roof, or? It's uh, the eave line, isn't it? No, there's, I think it's like R2, R1 that talks about the eave and then talks about the top of the roof. I think that's the only area that does. Is that right, Mercy? Yeah, and we typically would measure to, if it's habitable space, we would measure to the peak of that. If it's your home and you're living in that floor, we'd measure to the peak of that roof. But if it's the top of the elevator shaft, then that, that's when you kind of get that extra bonus. 20 foot, the bonus, yeah. And we also have pitch regulations on the roof. I heard uh, Jenny talk about the uh, occupied floor. So no. for uh, us, like if it, that, if there's an area above that's AC'd, then we, we would measure to that. So if they've enclosed an area and it's air conditioned, okay. then we, we would count that in this particular case. So. Yeah, yeah, that's... Is, that's isn't nice. that the um, building that's kind of under dispute that they're trying to put a restaurant up there and have all kinds of people? Uh, they were trying to get an alcohol license and then that was pulled. It was a few months ago, maybe end of last year. Um, but... Yeah, this is like the rooftop area that is enclosed. But then over here, just like Marcy was saying, if it's the top of an elevator, stairways, um, things of that nature, um, the things that are listed in this exceptions to the height regulations, that's, that's what we wouldn't count. So, so if they did want to have, let's say, not this particular one, but just a building in general wanted to have a restaurant or a bar on top and they had an enclosed area, the height of that would be what we'd go off of. So they wouldn't just get to throw it up there and not have it in included in the height. We would look at that. So once they start to get to the roof area and utilizing that, we're very particular about kind of how we try to, to guide them through that, through lessons learned. Okay, so then that would be, would that be considered another floor or roof space? I think, I think that's where it gets tricky, and that's why in all of our zoning districts, we've really referred back to just the height and feet and not, yes. oh, you can have X amount of floors over, over parking um, because there can be a discussion and dispute over, well, what's technically a floor or a story? Um, and our code isn't very clear. I think it's with floor, floor right? Um, it, it's really not clear in our code um, on those definitions. So that's why we've, you know, starting years ago that we just really just went with, okay, we're just going to go with feet. You know, how many feet above the DFE instead of you can have three floors over parking because then you're, how big are the floors going to be? What do you consider a floor? Are you going to have rooftop? Do we consider that a floor? Typically, yes. Um, depends on, on what it's utilized for. Um, so that's why we just are going with feet, and we're going to continue doing that. So is that building an oops? Because as I'm looking, that would be John's Pass Resort area that was 44 feet from DFE. Uh, this so is a PD. So they went, they rezoned it to a planned development, so they asked for additional height. Um, they're within their height that was approved. Okay, see, and I think that would be a very good example for the people to realize that that's how you can get higher floors. It wasn't originally approved under our normal standards, and I think that's where a lot of the people are like, so if you're changing it from 44 feet to 60 feet, and you're 60 feet plus DFE, so you're basically potentially 74 feet. And that's where, you know, when I was here the other day, it's just like, it, it I mean, you know, I consider myself pretty knowledgeable, but I didn't really know what DFE was. And the Hard DF to imagine, too. Yeah. And, and the DFE, I, I would say that would you'd need to get kind of an idea of what the ground elevations are in those areas so that, we, so that the people know what they're getting. So like in, in terms of if, if it's, you know, at two foot, if the elevations around there are two foot, well, okay, so the first floor has got to be at, you know, 12 feet above that to get the DFE. So you're, so you're 12 feet there and then another 70 feet. So now you're no, another 60 feet. So you're a total of 70, 72 feet. And that's where I had wondered the other day in terms of trying to make it, you know, it's a KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. 
you know, so uh, just so that people have the idea. And like you said, it was, that's an example, but that example was done through a PD. But then yeah. you've also got this, the one right across the street, which I guess was that a PD also? Variances. It yeah. actually was done with variances. Yeah, which is different as well. I, I guess it's kind of hard because we're looking at, uh, we've been trying to look for site plans and building plans, but a lot of these buildings are older, so we don't have all the plans. Um, Barefoot Beach is a newer one, so we have those plans. It's very clearly indicated on the heights, so that's why it's one of the examples. So there, there are a lot of condo buildings that were built in the 70s and early 80s that are five stories over parking or... I guess six floors that currently don't meet our height limit um, of 44 feet above DFE. So that's one of the reasons, one of the goals of this was to make things conforming, so to legalize these existing buildings also. Because we don't want to allow for additional height, but we want to make sure that everyone is accounted for and that within a reasonable degree that things are now brought to, because it's kind of weird to back in the day, they cut the height, because it seems kind of unfair that some property owners got taller and then other people that didn't build before that was implemented now lost like, potentially, like probably like two stories. So this is basically fixing a previous mistake that, that probably shouldn't have happened back then. And uh, the other th limits we want to include though is requiring a certain amount of land to allow for that height. Um, most of the buildings that are this height usually have at least half an acre or closer to an acre. So potentially we could require at least half an acre of land to allow for that height. We could re require additional setbacks. So there's ways to mitigate it, especially because there, there are some single family homes mixed in there. So we don't want super tall buildings right next to people's houses. So requiring additional setback or a certain amount of land or landscaping would be important. Good stuff. So I have a, I have a question for Jenny. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you had mentioned that the top floor could be occupied for like a restaurant, right, in some cases? Yeah, well, it yeah. depends on the zoning and... Right, yeah, so my, my question about, is, right? as far as floor area ratio, would you include that top level as your floor area ratio? Yes, yes. It would, okay. Right. Unless if it's open and doesn't meet the definition of our gross floor area. But something like in Barefoot Beach where it's enclosed, yes, that would. I see. We would so if it's open to air, ratio. it's not included in your floor area ratio, Correct. even though they can use it for like a bar. Yes, if it was completely open, if they just had seats out there, it's completely open. Okay, thank you. So I have a question real quick. Um, kind of to Chuck's point, and as we have these meetings coming up with the public, um, you know, if there's a way to, because even myself, when you say five stories, to your point, sometimes that doesn't mean 50 feet, sometimes it means 60, sometimes it means, you know. So if there's a way, and I, I think Andrew mentioned it earlier, where you have a plan that kind of shows like, okay, we have this plan, which shows our zoning, right? But that kind of ha gives an overlay of <clears throat> the actual feet above grade or above DFE for the existing structures. I, I mean, that could be a, kind of a task, but that way people know, like, okay, this structure that I'm used to seeing is 40 feet above DFE or 60 feet above DFE. I don't know. I feel like that, you know. So, so will you pull up the, the one we just were showing out of curiosity? I just want to make sure I understand. So on this one, that's kind of why I tried to grab this one is to show mm -hmm. the height of the mm -hmm. actual building above. Yeah. Would you like to see it differently? Is that what you're saying? No, well, I'm saying, yeah. So, so I guess what I'm saying is in, in like plan view, so like over top of this, where it's like, okay, like I know like this property here is – Okay. 40 feet above DFE. This property is 60 feet above DFE because people drive by it every day and gotcha. have it okay. in their brain. 
hey, the Bubba Gump building is, okay, that one's 60 feet above DFE. Otherwise, it's hard to, like, mentally think about like what, what, what is, is what. Because, like I said, you could say five stories, six stories, and it just doesn't mean anything. So, and then to Andrew's point with just things that are already non-conforming, it kind of shows, hey, like, these things exist already. It just helps explain it a little bit better. Um, otherwise, everyone's just going to get, I don't know. To get really I guess in a way it's kind of like how we can sell it that we've accepted it and or like he said you know if you point out okay so Bubba Gump's is this high the um, parking garage is this high and and um, just to define some of the areas within the areas so we can say oh absolutely so what you like to see with this one is us to point to the map and say in Barefoot Beach is located here. This is the height above DFE. Yeah. This is the picture of the front. Okay. Right. So if I if I were looking at this map mm -hmm. from this, I could I it. could very clearly define in my brain that the transition of height between the transitional area, which is this, to the core to the boardwalk okay. is like, oh, I'm seeing this kind of go from 80 feet to 40 feet to 60 feet. So because in my brain, right, is your the activity center is kind of bookended by this, which is very tall, and the uh, compared to what's normally in Madeira Beach, and the boardwalk. So when you can see, okay, so the bounds of this is 60 feet to 60 feet, and anything in between that, like I don't know, I just I feel like it would help explain it or show it to people. Um, we've been trying to find older site plans of some of those those six-story condo buildings and it's been um, we'll keep looking because that, that's one of the reasons why not all those existing ones were shown in feet because if it's like newer plans that have been done the last 10 years or so we we have those usually on record and they're easy to find but some of these buildings were built 40 plus years ago um, would you want a map showing existing heights that we can find versus proposed like have two maps I guess well I think I think if you have the existing heights so people can understand like well the proposed height is here is 50 feet and the current things are 30 feet like you know like um, I don't know if we need a proposed map we just just existing would be ideal and maybe if you pulled one building out of each character sure, district sure that said like find the tallest building in each character district because mm -hmm. that's going to be the concern right yeah yep. is the overall height so yeah if you pull the tallest get building out of each one of the potential character districts and say this is the tallest building here it's barefoot beach club and and we won't be going that high or we will whatever the number is right and then maybe the other district is is the parking garage Right. And so this is the tallest building there and it will be compared to that. It's this <clears throat> that way you don't have to try and get, you know, from uh, Crimson and Madeira Norte and all, the, you know, you don't have to get every building, but get a, a sampling one, the worst one or the highest one from each. Yeah. Different. Or just in a general area. I mean, if you can get just whatever you can get. And, and if you do it in terms of, if you do it in terms of DFE, so people, so you don't have to think about what DFE is, you just say, this is 50 feet above DFE. Yeah, and then I, I think people need know, a point like, of reference. Yeah, it, right, just get multiple points of reference from all the different districts, whatever you can, and I think on a site plan would be helpful. Is somebody sees 60 feet, they're like, ah! Exactly. You know, they're gonna run with their hair yeah. on fire. Um, so if you can get it to compare to something that's already there, at least it gives like, okay, I, like I can see that now. You know, this is 80 feet or whatever it is from the ground. It, we're talking about 82 yeah. feet. So that's a little easier to swallow. And they say, well, what we're proposing is 60 feet. Right. Okay, cool. Now I get it, right? It's not going to be a – I think everybody's worried that we're going to be driving down a canyon on Gulf Boulevard, right? And nobody wants that. So if – if we've got to show that that's not the intent or the spirit of what's trying to be accomplished, and you can do that by giving a frame of reference, I think. And, and that's kind of the direction I was headed. This was one of the easiest ones to kind of grab and start. So I wanted sure. to definitely get your feedback on what you thought was helpful. Um, and to Andrew's point, we we're trying to pull some of the site plans. 
So I think the one thing we're missing here, though, is tying this location into the site plan so that you can easily say, okay, location A, Barefoot Beach this high, location B in this new district is mm -hmm. this building. So we, we can do that. So that's exactly kind of the feedback we were looking for from sharing this with you tonight. So this we, is perfect. We, yeah, did so you. we did try to keep the heights on certain districts like Boardwalk and the low intensity mixed use and traditional village um, lower mm -hmm. to make sure not to block any views or so we, we really tried to make sure the village area stayed the same and that the heights proposed in the Johns Pass Resort and the transitional match the existing uh, condo and temporary lodging buildings that are currently there. But uh, we can definitely work on a map to visualize and show it because at the end of the day, on a positive note, even the tallest buildings down there are much smaller than anything you'd see in Clearwater Beach or St. Pete Beach. For sure. So, like... People, on a positive note, those types of buildings wouldn't be allowed and aren't currently built there. Um, but visualizing it to show that, that's not a scary height because 60 sounds like a lot, but in reality, there's buildings that already exist that are that around that. Right. Um, that's exactly our point. Yeah. And, and then, we just want to make that easy for people to grasp. Like, the, you get it, I get it, we get it, yeah. but we want to make sure somebody reading the proposal gets it or, or comes to one of the workshops gets it. In the previous master plan, they, they proposed on the beach side uh, like uh, six stories or five stories over parking um, in, the, in the previous master plan. So it, it, yeah, so it's they, not like we're the first people to – that's what was, even back then was, was proposed on – similar to that. We wanted to do to give a little more flexibility on, on heights because people like taller ceilings in their rooms. They don't want to feel cost, like – like enclosed too much because sometimes older they like, had or even the parking garage the floors are closer together so it, it's kind of tough trying to find that balance between allowing some flexibility but not too much to because we, we don't want super tall buildings either so we tried to find that balance so uh, one other question uh, is is our height measured from is is for instance measured from DFE but is DFE based on FEMA, or is it based on Pinellas County vulnerability? Uh, it's based on the, the firm, so FEMA, the FEMA maps. We haven't adopted the vulner, vulnerability study that um, Pinellas County has done as, Man, our, as our base maps. So many cities have. I just want yes, to. yeah, many cities have, and um, I think whenever they, uh, the Pinellas County was finishing up those maps, we had to adopt... Um, clock was running down of when we, we had to adopt uh, some map, one of the maps, and uh, Pinellas County was just coming out with their maps so in 2021. So we went, up, we went with the firm, the FEMA map. Yeah. Um, well, and the, we also adopted that higher free board yes, because we knew that the for, studies yes. um, showed that you know the firm wasn't completely accurate and Pinellas County study was more accurate than what the firm was. So um, we were trying to balance that with a higher free board. So in case if we do want to adopt the county's maps, then we could kind of readjust that and it yes. wouldn't be so off. Yeah. That's, thank you. Finally, is there, there used to be some devices that could measure things, you know, go, uh, um, Google Maps and all that. So if you could go to the ceiling of a building and then measure down or the, the roof of a building and then measure down to the ground uh, to make it simpler, like, okay, so this structure is 63 feet. I mean, you know, and I know they used to have measuring devices, but, uh, you know, something as simple as that, and you could go through and identify, okay, so this building's this tall, this one's this tall, this one's this tall, and, and not necessarily having to get plans, you know, to show... Because once again, it's just like if, if you say it's 62 feet, nobody's going to go out and measure, okay, it's no 61.9. And, and I don't know whether or not there are those capabilities of measuring distances. I think there used to be. I know, I know we can do it in plan view, profile view, because it gets distorted on Google sometimes when you're looking at it from the street view. I think height may be a little, but there may be some other software that would allow us to do it. I'd, I'd have to look and see. Um, if I could, yeah, check, like, 
go to Google, measure the height, and it matches what I have on the plan, yeah. then I would feel comfortable doing it. Um, but I'd have to see if we can do it in, in the profile. I mean, I think that would save view. a whole lot of time because yeah, then basically you can you can identify almost correct. every building yep. simply. Yep. I'd have to see if you can do it in section view. So yeah, we could definitely look at that. Yeah, I definitely did not intend to uh, say, hey, go out and uh, take a laser measure and hit every building. <laughs> but yeah, I wonder if maybe, can GIS do that too, maybe? I don't know if it can. We have, we can do laser height measurements and we would have to, I'd have to take it out I know we do it inside the buildings. I'd have to see, get with Frank and see what its capabilities are externally if there was, you know, a balcony or something that came over yeah. and we could shoot that and right. kind of gut check it from there. But, yeah, we can definitely, you know, do something um, like that. Like more, la you know, last resort almost. You know, if you feel like you need to fill in some gaps on that map, you know, maybe it's worth it just to – but to, to Mike's point, I mean, I think, I think that just – Getting a sample set is probably good enough, um, to me anyway. Okay. okay. By chance, do you know what, on Pelican Lane, that four-story building, it's th three floors and the garage is, or says underneath parking, it's brand new. It's going uh, up now. I think that one's 44 feet. Is it? I believe it's 44 above DFE. 44. Yep. You can see that, that from right. you can see that from Gulf Boulevard if you drive by, because it towers up over all of the stores. And I can so tell you when you they start about, work in the morning and when they finish. Yeah, <laughs> you think about right that at 44 office. feet, and you add another 16 to it, you can basically yeah, visualize, and that basically is the entrance into where all of this is going to happen. So it's going to be a progression upwards. Yeah, and I would have to look at the plans because I can't remember if the stairways or stairwells counted for that height. Uh, uh, it's been a while. Yeah, and also we're not proposing any height increases in that area. We are keeping it exactly the same as what it is currently. So it's going to stay at 44. Correct. The only places we're proposing the 60 feet are areas where there are actual buildings at that around that height currently. Because as I said, we don't want to increase heights where it's unnecessary to do that. Because um, in the village, we're, we're keeping the height of the, or the same in the village and the boardwalk and along uh, Pelican Lane, so. Yeah, I guess I it believe would just that... be boardwalk in the village of, um, it's hard because so many of the buildings that were built in traditional village were before the zoning code. So we don't have a lot of those building plans um, in the height um, of that area. And then Boardwalk, I know we have like the garage, Bubba Gumps. Um, I don't know if we have the height of on that side. I know we have the height of the garage on like the commercial core area. One, um, yeah. one option with Village we could do since like the triangle lot is potentially where the city parking lot would go, we could just like write 34 feet or 44 with an eight, half an acre or acre of land, depending on how much, because because I, I agree we don't want buildings towering. towering over on the outside parts of it. So to cap it, it, it let's say in the boardwalk, let's say we kept it at the 34 and in village on, on one side of village, it was kept at 34 and Potentially in the triangle thing, it was for because that's where the city parking sure, garage would go. Um, that that is one option. That's why we wanted to require land. So just in case, if we need to add more buffering or setback to um, mitigate that height. As it looks, the developer has three more lots that are vacant that he looks like he's going to continue building. And they're so square and so plain that, and you see it, it just, and I just said to these two gentlemen, why didn't that come before us? Because it didn't have to, it's conforming. I know that, mm -hmm. but, you know, just architecturally, if I'm looking at something, why do I have to look at a shoebox? <laughs> 
You well, don't. I do. I live across the water from it. Well, I, I, I understand <laughs> but, that. It's the same thing with the Cambria and the, the other. Yeah. And we don't have design guidelines, which is what we will be writing no. in that's, this section. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, part of the fatal flaw we have. There are no architectural guidelines. There's nothing guidelines. for us, even as staff. So to in say, order to get oh, the square you footage, have to make it. I a lot line, a lot like line. This. But that's not yeah. my fault. My my fault is everybody visually is looking at this. Yep. You bought the property. You made the commitment. However, you work out the square footage, but it doesn't have to be a square block building. That's I my opinion. With you. you know, yep. a lot of the reason that happens too, and it's 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 frustrating because we do have small lots, and everybody wants to absolutely maximize their setbacks, and so it it does force us into the situation that you're talking about. That's a whole different set of meetings. Yes, but it, within this zoning with John's Pass, we are proposing, we are going to put in design so. guidelines. We will be. I pray. Yes. All right, How moving much, right uh, along. Yeah, one other question, if you don't mind. How much would the special magistrate have flexibility in increasing, let's say, height that we are trying to set? So with height, we really are looking for PD. So it would be a rezone to PD, and then that would go to Planning Commission and BOC. Wouldn't the magistrate only have under his jurisdiction variances, and with a variance you have to prove a hardship? Yes. Okay. Yes. It's, it's quite difficult. But needing more height to build more units is not a hardship. No, no. Yeah. So that's why you would have to go through the PD. And, and, any, and because of the special area plan and the future land use, even if someone did try to rezone, the, they'd still be stuck dealing with the special area plan. So that would really limit what they could do because they'd still have to make it look like John's Pass. So a 12-story building isn't John's Pass. So like they're still stuck dealing with that. Mm -hmm. So uh, luckily, because we were so strict with regulate, like we tried to make sure to protect the community from scenarios like that. Excellent. All right. What else you got? We really just have jo John's Pass. So if we want to go to the zone and the um, setbacks, and we kind of talked about just the take height me wherever and you want us how, to go. how we can visualize that at these meetings. Um, so that was great input. So we want to go to the setbacks um, and kind of, because we can go to the Barefoot Beach. We really just tackled Barefoot Beach as like the first thing. We knew that we had, you know, more recent plans on the height. So just trying to see what that looks like, what we could put together uh, for these meetings. And obviously we'll do it for other buildings as well. But um, just trying to see what that looks like. If it's too much for, um, this I know has a lot of pictures going on here, so it's very busy, but um, we're just trying to figure out how to visualize this, um, how to show it to the public at these public workshops, and what works, what doesn't work, what makes sense. So this is what we put together what, the last few days. Yeah, so like when we get the site plan, um, when we look at setbacks, we look at the, the outermost edge of the structure as related to the property line. And those are the setbacks and how we measure them. So I kind of wanted to show here, like in the rear, for instance, you see there's a setback to the structure. Then as you go to the second floor, there's a balcony. And our code allows for like the balconies, once you hit the second floor, to encroach into the setback, like, you know, four feet, for example. So kind of wanted to be able to visualize what we're looking at and, and how that's measured and determined. So th that is strictly kind of what, what this example is for. So is it what you're telling me is it's being proposed that that would continue to be allowed, the overhang encroaching into the setback? We, we do allow those for balconies, yep, throughout that would be That code. would continue? Within reason, I'm assuming we haven't really talked yes. about that. Yeah, so we are within reason, yeah, that we would okay. still allow for those encroachments for the um, balcony. And they're, they're pretty specific about what's allowed and how it's allowed. Okay. For instance, you wouldn't be able to have, you could have the cantilever, but it, once you put a column there, it that starts it, it over, exactly. yeah, changes the measurement. Correct. Got it. One thing I, I did want to talk a bit about is a great thing with us being, working on the zoning is we're able to 
definitely listen to community fee and plan commission and board feedback to change things that, that people might not like currently with our current zoning code. Like um, certain things like on, on the beach side, you, you're able to restrict um, certain uses if you got, because I, I know there's been concerns about rooftop uses. So you can write in the zoning code what it's restricted to. Um, we'll probably eventually have to do the alcohol ordinance separate to uh, restrict certain alcohol from not being allowed on that side of the beach or on the beach side. Um, but that's it's important like to realize like now we have the chance to fix certain things within reason and what, what we're able to do. But um, if people have like concerns about like kind of roof, rooftop noise or roof, like there's certain things we can restrict or, or require additional sound deadening or in, or on a pause note with the floor area that, that we have down there now, you'd have more sound deadening because you'd have more in, areas enclosed instead of open. Because one of the things with Barefoot Beach Club is it has a lot of open areas to keep the FAR around that, uh, was it 1.02? That, that would, if, if the FAR allowed previously was higher, it would have been enclosed and, and, and with windows and air and, and the noise. The hallways would be yeah. enclosed. So. Um, also, one thing we've talked about is what Andrew was talking about with, you know, rooftop bars or rooftop um, amenities possibly having that as a special exception use, meaning you would have to go to the special magistrate. You would also okay. notify all your neighbors. So we've written that into, I think, the special exception um, as of right now, just you know, as our proposed draft, um, thinking of that going forward and having that as a special exception use. Would that be coming in front of us before it goes in front of the board? Oh, absolutely. And the community, like uh, what we're going to be doing uh, workshops uh, this this month. Um, do we have the dates? Some yes, the 13th, the 18th, and the 20th. So we'll be getting community feedback because we want to make sure because now that's the chance for the community to kind of correct things that that they might have had issue with with our zoning code, and now we can actually fix it at least in that area. Good stuff. So I've got a couple questions about the setbacks and. Are we finished with that? Or are we discussing it? No, we can we Let can go rip. into discussing it and <clears throat> well, what in terms, works here or what well, works in the setback. Well, in terms of the commercial core, um, that you have nothing in the front and 20 in the back, I'll where it used to be to 10 and 10. I mean, you know, and I guess, I, I, are these setbacks based upon what's kind of existing there? Is that where you came up with these numbers? Uh, so anything in the red is a proposed change. It's really kind of our attempt is like, here's a starting point, let's just discuss it. Um, so right now in the commercial core, it's C1, so there's none in the front. Um, and then on the side, well, it's 10 feet on one side, and in the rear, it's, let's see, 25, it looks like. So that's what's in the C1 zoning district right now. As we know, a lot of those buildings don't meet that criteria. So where you see on this column, on the ground setbacks, that's where we're still collecting data. So you can see some of them are filled out, but Commercial Core, we don't have all the data there. Um, but we know that a lot of places in Commercial Core, as well as tr Traditional Village, both of them are C1 zoning districts, uh, they don't meet that uh, the setbacks that are currently in the zoning code. Well, I'm looking at it from a standpoint of the commercial core is the orange in the new activity center area. Yes. Which to have zero setback in the front means that you're going to be right on the street. And right on the street is a hazard at Sweet Brunettes. I mean, I don't even know, you know, and, and so that's, I think that's a major problem, you know, so if you have 20 foot in the back, uh, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to me, you know, being right on top of the sidewalk property line. So it's uh, the commercial core is this area, this orange area right here. So we have the garage, um, 
and then a few like Delosas, um, and then we and that's also mostly have, walking traffic. Area. Yeah, it's walking, walking areas. All inside the village core. On the left side, the right side is all open and nothing's all rock. There's rock buildings here, lots. and then some over here, and then Waltz is over here too. Well, yeah. So the left part is all basically developed. That's where the parking garage is and, and um, the parking garage and the little hotel. Mm -hmm. Right um, here. Right, and Delosa's and the boardwalk. Well, Delosa's is in the, the orange area. Yeah. Yes. Like and right there's here. zero setback right in now. In front? On both sides. They're right up on the sidewalk. <clears throat> Yeah, I know that they have, I think, an awning on right Boardwalk right. Place, like right over here. So I don't know if that that might not be to the um, property line. They might have a little bit of a setback there. Oh, good idea. That's, um, there we go. Now I'm oh, yeah, I think they have a zero. And they just do um, sidewalk cafe. Well, to some extent, so I guess like my point is zero there is not bad because you got a huge sidewalk. So I'm just, you know, and, and, and the thing is, not knowing where the actual property line is, is where the gray area is. And I'm sure people will look at, you know, zero setback. Well, you know, you're right on the road, basically. So one thing that we, are, we always check on... <clears throat> So this isn't always 100% accurate, but it's it's pretty close on where the property lines are. Uh, so this might be a little off. You really have to go to the um, see. So this is over. Obviously, it's a little off. But there are rules about ingress and egress and safety associated with that. So you wouldn't end up with a situation, I think maybe you're thinking you step out of a building and bam, you step into a road. So that, th there are ingress, egress requirements that we wouldn't allow for, for that to happen. So, yeah. Well, I mean, like I say, I'm just, you know, as John said, you know, we're paying for people that didn't really care previously and now we're, we're trying to do the fight. I mean, you know, and that's why I think we're all trying to be so adamant about getting all these things correct at this time. Definitely. And one thing that we've talked about internally to uh, let me go up is having um, you know, if it's two stories or higher having requiring a setback but requiring you to have oh requiring you to have Step something back. like an awning or a structured awning, something like what they have over here. Say if, I mean, this property they own John's Way and across. So, but say if this was the property line, you know, you would have to have some, some setback so it's not, doesn't seem like a huge box that's very opposing right on um, the sidewalk. So that's something that we've also talked about and we want to also explore and look at other Main Street zonings in Pinellas County and other areas that are similar to John's Pass. Well, I mean, like I say, that looks, that's pretty. I mean, you know, so and if they're, you know, so long as you have enough walking area in front of it, and I guess also nobody's really going to be driving fast down there, so it's not like it's a blind corner like at Sweet Brunette. Um, I mean, you know, but like that was, that was an oops, and, you know, fortunately we're not dealing with that area at this point. But um, I, I don't know as to whether or not if we, and, and I, this is a question, do we have to correct all the oopses that were done before? How can you? Well, I, I, well, I think that's what they're kind of saying that they're trying to do to keep everything in. Yeah, I would say not with the setbacks. So really, just trying to see um, it was mostly for the intensity and, and density, a lot of the density. So um, that's really covered with the future land use change and all of that. 
I think the setbacks, it's really imagining, well, how, how does this area function? How do we want it to function in the future? What works? What's typical of, you know, all these character districts? Well, I guess, and also possibly as an example, that rock lot right over to the right there. If you say what can be put on, what can be put on that property, right. you know, as an example, using these current guidelines or what you're looking to do, what can be developed there? The usage of, of each of all your storefronts have different uses. Like a coffee shop has a lot of people in and out, but a sewing shop may not. So your setbacks wouldn't, would have to depend on the usage. And if you had a two story building where the second story was dumped into the first one, Set back th a little bit more. then you'd have to have a better or a bigger setback or an area that that building, when you stepped out of the building, wasn't in a danger zone, such as, you know. Just one thing I wanted to remember, remind you guys of, too. Um, back when a lot of this was done, the ADA requirements weren't in place or weren't being properly followed. So ADA will drive a lot of what ultimately happens to these buildings. So that forces the safe, you know, stepping in, stepping out, and access to. So... You don't see that, but anything new coming in or anything rebuilt would have to adhere to all those requirements right. as well. I think I think what I'm kind of hearing is right. Not only like pedestrian safety, but we all are saying right. We're at this moment where we can kind of help make this space and and make some updates that are better than what maybe we've had in the past. And I think. Really, what we're looking for is something that's a little bit more pedestrian centric. Because, like right now, you know, kind of some parts of John's Pass feel like a big parking lot, and it feels like just cars, and that's not what it's supposed to feel like, in my opinion. And I think the beauty of versus the building code regulations and things like that, the beauty of what we have the ability to do from the planning side and then from on our side is, I think if you want to defend against some of those things, we have to get creative with what are some pedestrian-centered regulations that are going to be required to be followed within setbacks, within new developments, within things like that. Because otherwise, it's just going to still be a car-centric kind of environment. So... I would say as much as the, you know, the densities, intensities, and building heights and all that are great, what I, I personally would like to see and kind of to what y'all are talking about is with setbacks, maybe more landscape-focused, you know, defensive landscape-focused, things that deter people from driving too quickly, um, you know, something that feels a little more walkable versus the middle of the road, a, you know, a double line road down the middle of the Johns Pass Village. Um, that's personally what I would like to see, and I think that would capture a lot of the concerns. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, that was a that's kind of a good example if you go back to that road. I mean, that right there, people f can fly through there. This road right here, if you go back down that little alley, and I know it's a little smaller, when you when you drive next to that landscape like that you automatically you slow down and you you know so things like that i think if we can get some ideas as to how can we regulate and implement more things that allow for a more walkable environment um i think that solves a lot of and that's actually within the power of planning and zoning versus building regulations so um i don't know I mean, yeah, some of those street improvements would most likely, like if it's on a local street fall in the, the city, they do, like let's say you wanted to do speed table or raised crosswalks, that would that would need to be in our CIP. Um, because I, which we can definitely discuss, but I don't think it would be, I, I mean, the land development regulations, I think we'd be more like talking about like minimum sidewalk widths, um, certain like 
because we, we definitely want to make sure pedestrians have enough room, and if restaurants want to do sidewalk cafes, that there's enough room for that, and pedestrians and people in wheelchairs can all get down. So there, there's certain things we, we can, uh, yeah, we definitely want to make it pedestrian focused, and, and when we show our draft of LDRs, I think it'll show that pretty well, but some of the other stuff is probably going to have to be infrastructure that, that will have to be in our, our CIP and, and public works. Yeah, I think we're getting a little out over our skis right now yeah. Yeah. and getting too, in, too much into the weeds, no pun intended, with the landscaping thing. But <clears throat> I think the height and, and the, the height, the density, the setbacks, generically speaking, are what needs to be addressed first. The rest will come in when they go to the building department for a site plan approval, uh, and that will be part of that process, right? I don't know that we need to get down in there right now because we're just looking at <clears throat> the the activity centers and the, taking care of the new big picture items right now. We'll have to drill down to that later, but we've got to get you know phase one, phase two, phase three as we get deeper and deeper into it. I don't think we're going to cover it all now, and we certainly can't go back and fix everything that's not exactly. not been done correctly. There's no way to unwind that stuff, but we can do the best we can going forward. Another thing that we've talked about is having a different sign code for commercial core, traditional mm -hmm. village, boardwalk. But right now, we really just want to get the framework done and yep, then kind of I agree. visit that after we get the, the basics of zoning. But then after we do that, we do definitely do want to address signage. At that time, do landscaping and Safety. just make it more robust. Yeah. But just yeah, getting I think that for, framework. For what we're doing now, let's stick to... Yeah. This stuff, the height, the setbacks, you know. But those things are still, still yeah. Because yeah. like when we started this process with the village, it was for a major storm event, so we had all this in place ahead of time. So, like my question is, if something is non-conforming, would they be grandfathered in to go back to what they had, or would they have to then follow all this the new guidelines? Um, it depends on what it is. Our non-conforming section of the code is it's kind of lengthy. Um, I know with like residential, a lot of them you can build within the same existing footprint. You can extend along an encroaching side if you go to planning commission, if your lot is within this many feet wide, um, if you're in these zoning districts. So it's it's a little difficult saying on the on the cusp of is that allowed or is it not? I know that the floor area ratio for commercial buildings is not, so that was one of our big driving factors as well as we need to get this done. We need to make sure that these commercial buildings can stay or can um, be renovated and not just how they are right now. And if a storm comes, they can't rebuild. So that was one of our big driving factors of that. So then my big question is with the three um, workshops that we're having and then the more fine-tuning that you guys are going to be doing, will we be seeing this again next month with what the actual numbers are going to be proposed? Yeah, that's our plan is just to bring this back every single month, give you updates, get more input from you um, so you can start seeing our drafts. And so it's not just, hey, surprise, here's this. Do you like it? So it's really, we want to get your input. We want to get public input. We want to incorporate all of that into the land development regulations. And, and I think that's good, and that's where I think we've gotten to a point. We try to not pass anything on that has any iffiness, and I'm not sure whether or not anything has gone on, you know, beyond us, you know, that we haven't approved. So it's just kind of a matter of we're trying to make sure that when it gets pushed on to the Board of Commissioners that we have basically all signed off on it. Mm -hmm. well, once we feel ready, once all of you feel ready and we feel like this is a good draft, then that's when we'll bring it forward. But we want to make sure that we get as much input and that everybody feels very comfortable with it. Could we talk about some of the projects on the Gulf related to coastal construction control line setbacks? Could we? Yeah, let's push that to the is planning it? commission discussion. We'll let them finish this I part, see. and then okay. we'll jump in on that. All right. Because that's, that's also setback related. Sure. Well, this is activity center plan, though, stuff right now. Right? talk about it in the activity center as like a Do we have question? Zoning, do we have or? CCC line in the activity center? Yes. We do. Yeah, oh, okay. on yeah. the beachfront right. condo. Okay. 
So then oh, ask so it in relation to that. Yeah, go for so it. So let's, <laughs> let's do that. So yeah, the setback so. in R3 um, I sit is, corrected. is the CCCL. So that's, that's what the setback is. And everything on the west side is R3. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, I mean, I have it cut along the uh, coastal construction control line. Like, it doesn't, this is where it is. Mike. Your mic's off, I think. Right? Oh, yeah, your microphone's off, Andrew. I have the boundary set along, I made sure the boundary was set along it. So anything landward of the, it, like on this side is uh, landward of the uh, coastal construction control line and anything on the other side of it is on, on the beach, on the beach side. And on our future land use map, I think it's preservation. Um, but uh, I can pull up the property appraiser um, to show where, where it is. Lisa. Yeah, so on traditional village, you're looking to decrease it from 25 to 18. So, so is that is that from coastal construction control line? The setback? Yes. No, that's like on the inland side. We're talking about um, we'd probably be in Johns Pass Resort and transitional. Yeah. So this is this is yeah. right down here is Johns Pass Resort, and then it goes to transitional over here. Not from the rear property lines. You you you, you the setbacks from CCC line, not the not the property line. It's from the, yeah, it's from the CCCL. Um, and I think how it's written right now in the R3, all of this is R3, is the setback is the CCCL. So you can build to the CCCL. Yes. But, but now you're proposing to give it 25 feet or so setback? It, yeah. No, that, I think it's a... No, it's, you're, you're talking about a different district. Well, go back to the it. traditional village. Are you talking about right? Where, where's our? Well, you, you're two. You got two. You got Jams Pass oh, Resort. Oh, transitional. transitional so you do have things across the street on the east side. So that's where um, I guess it's not really clear. We know because we see it all the time. But the C three, C three, C four, and R two, those are all on the east side of Gulf Boulevard. So we would have um, how we have the draft right now is. Okay, you're in transitional district. If you're on the east side of Gulf Boulevard, these are your setbacks. If you're on the west side of Gulf Boulevard, these are your setbacks. So the, yeah, the rear setback on the beach side on the west side right now in the R3 is CCCL, and we just, we kept that for, for right now. Um, I think it's 25 if you're not on the beach side. You don't have the CCCL on your property. There's a few properties like that um, so things these properties right here so we'd be looking at at that as well all these properties um, in front of Gulf Lane obviously they don't have the CCCL so they have to have a setback and right now it's 25 feet is, is the green line is that the CCC line yes and the property lines are maybe another 50 feet, in some cases, out? Yeah, in some cases. Water ward? Mm hmm Because <clears throat> a lot of, I mean, look at a whole bunch of buildings there. They're already constructed up to CCC line. Exactly. And, and why change it now? Hmm? They're still allowed to. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they're they're allowed to build up to the CCCL on this side. When you're in an interior lot and you don't have the CCCL, then the rear setback of 25 feet kicks oh, in. Oh, I see. Yep. Okay. It's All a, right. Yeah, I, so I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's not confused. CCCL minus 25 feet. Oh, correct. It's yes. the minus CCCL kind of, or, if yeah. you're beachfront, if you're not, it's 25 feet. Okay. Trying to smush okay. everything yeah, into I see. one, I, one I was, Excel document. I was looking at that myself going, tricky. why did it go from zero to 25 feet? Yes. That's going to be yeah. problematic. Like Seabreeze is on, you know, not Seabreeze, but some of them further south are right on the yes. control okay. line. So it's if you're on, if you border the control line, you can go right up to it. If you're not a property that abuts the control line, it's 25 foot setback. I mean, you can go up to it as long as your setback from the real property line could be whatever it is that you want it to be, right. you know, depending on where the property line is. Right. 
One challenge, especially between Golf Boulevard and Golf Lane, is when Golf Boulevard was widened back in the day, it, it, it took a lot of the frontage off these properties. Yeah. And as you can see, a lot of these lots are some some of them are only like eighty four feet. So that's mine, by the way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, no, not the lot. There's a house on it right next to Madeira and Orchard. Oh. oh, no, that's a different one. Sorry. Different but anyway, one. I have one right there. Same but effect. There's no back, no front yard because Gulf Boulevard yeah. came up in front so, of it. Very little front yard. There's like a lot of kind of that, that right now would require a variance to be able to build a house there. Um, but Great. <laughs> one, one thing we could write in the zoning is if you're building a, I don't know, a single family home, um, it yeah, only has to meet mine. these setbacks if the lot is like less than, I don't know, 4,000 square feet or. So. Yeah. <clears throat> that one actually is mine. Mine's the rear setback violation, not front right now. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just you get all of these, <clears throat> you can <clears throat> just tell they're all non-conforming. Yeah. Legally non-conforming. Built before the zoning code. Yeah. Just like Yeah, I've got about a 12 inch side setback and yeah. all kinds of yeah. crazy stuff over there. But that, so therein lies the problem. We can't we can't pass or we can't recommend changes that and then make those comply. They're gonna they're gonna have to stay exactly. the way they are, right? Hmm? All right, it is. So we got to do the best for the most. Exactly. So you're looking at what's in the character district, what matches where where right. do we see the future. Um, yeah, not not just oh this one is built right on the property line, so let's do zero foot setbacks everywhere. Um, but really looking at the character districts and what what makes sense. Character. <laughs> All right, good stuff. What else we got? <clears throat> we good there? I think so, yeah. All right, nicely done. Um, does that cover everything for what you guys have cover, uh, need to bring us? Yeah, and then next time we'll... Um, Bring information from those meetings uh, that we have. Yeah, that'd be great. You are obviously yeah. welcome to attend. We'd love to see you. And um, what else? We'll bring updated draft. So you'll be seeing that. You'll be seeing that every month. So we will want input every month. I think that's all that we have. A lot of the uh, setbacks are also fire department related. So if you go closer than 10 feet, then you have to worry about like a two hour wall or. Yes, right. so we'll definitely be uh, bringing the drafts to fire department, to building, and to public works. Yeah, okay. All right, um, I guess that brings us to our next meeting, which is scheduled for May the 6th at 6 p.m., same location. Oh, is there any discussion? Oh, is there any discussion? I think we got the host's point about the control line, right? Good. Anybody else got any discussion? Any other discussion? Good. All right. Meetings adjourned. Thank you.